The savage jaws of the apex predator snapped shut, inches from the human's face. Zorin froze in terror, watching the scene unfold through his cloaking field. The earth creature's pointed teeth gleamed as it wrestled with its human prey, low growls emanating from its throat. Yet the human seemed unfazed, even amused as he tussled with the deadly beast. Zorin's breath caught in his throat. He'd assumed Earth would be an easy conquest for the mighty Ocampa Empire. Supreme Commander Galen had declared it so. A primitive backwater planet ripe for subjugation. How wrong they'd been. If humans commanded such lethal creatures as mere pets, what chance did the Ocampa stand? His hands shaking, Zorin activated his quantum communicator. Commander, abort the invasion. The humans, their power defies belief. They've tamed this world's apex predators to follow their every whim. We cannot hope to defeat a species with that level of dominance and aggression. Galen's reply crackled with disbelief and mounting dread. Impossible. Are you certain of what you saw? Describe everything. As Zorin relayed the horrifying details, he watched the human and his pet beast continue their mirthful play, oblivious to the chaos they'd unleashed upon the galaxy. Already, frantic orders echoed across Ocampa frequencies as the invasion fleet beat a hasty retreat. Earth had triumphed without firing a single shot, and as the true nature of humanity's power dawned on the fleeing Ocampa, a chilling realization gripped Zorin's heart. The universe itself would tremble before the might of mankind. The conquest had only just begun. As the Ocampa fleet retreated in a panicked frenzy, Earth's military scrambled to decipher the alien transmissions. General Marcus Holloway, a battle-hardened soldier with a no-nonsense demeanor, poured over the intercepted messages. His eyes widened as the truth became clear. The Ocampa believed humans possessed mind control over Earth's deadliest predators. Holloway marched into President Alexander Matheson's office, barely restraining his laughter. Mr. President, you won't believe this. The Ocampa think we're some kind of alien overlords, commanding packs of vicious beasts to do our bidding. Matheson leaned back in his chair, a slow grin spreading across his face. Well, well, seems our furry friends have given us quite the advantage. He steepled his fingers, mind racing with possibilities. Assemble a team, diplomats, strategists, and throw in a few dog whispers for good measure. We're going to pay the Ocampa a visit they won't soon forget. Within days, Operation Alpha Dog was in full swing. A hand-picked delegation of ambassadors, led by the charismatic Jackson Briggs, underwent intensive training alongside their canine companions. The dogs, outfitted with high-tech gear that accentuated their natural abilities, learned to perform impressive feats of obedience and agility. Meanwhile, Kyle Hall found himself thrust into the spotlight, his once-ordinary life turned upside down. Reporters camped outside his house, clamoring for interviews with the man whose playful wrestle with his dog had somehow averted an alien invasion. Through it all, Max remained loyally by Kyle's side, blissfully unaware of the chaos he had unleashed. As the delegation boarded the sleek spacecraft that would carry them to the Ocampa homeworld, Jackson Briggs felt a mix of excitement and trepidation. He glanced down at his partner, a regal German shepherd named Apollo, and felt a surge of confidence. Together, they would show the Ocampa the true power of the bond between man and dog. The journey through the stars passed in a blur of strategy meetings and training sessions. Briggs and his team honed their skills, perfecting every command and gesture. They knew the fate of Earth rested on their shoulders, and failure was not an option. At last, the Ocampa homeworld loomed before them, a sprawling metropolis of gleaming spires and bustling spacecraft. As the human delegation disembarked, flanked by their loyal canine companions, a hush fell over the gathered Ocampa crowds. Whispers of awe and fear rippled through the alien throng as they beheld the fearsome beasts at the human sides. Briggs stepped forward, Apollo at his heel, and faced the Ocampa leadership with a confident smile. Greetings, friends. We come in peace, seeking to forge a new alliance between our worlds. But first, allow us to demonstrate the true nature of our bond with these magnificent creatures you so rightly admire. The Ocampa watched, transfixed, as the human ambassadors put their dogs through a dazzling display of obedience and skill. 
leaps, flips, and perfectly executed commands left the aliens slack-jawed with amazement. In that moment, Briggs knew they had already won half the battle. As the demonstration concluded, Briggs extended a hand to the Ocampa Supreme Commander, a gesture of friendship and understanding. The commander hesitated, then slowly reached out to grasp the human's hand, sealing a new era of cooperation between their species. Back on Earth, Kyle Hall watched the historic moment unfold on his television screen. Max curled up contentedly at his feet. He smiled, marveling at the strange twists of fate that had brought them to this point. The future was uncertain, but one thing was clear. The bond between humans and dogs had just reshaped the course of galactic history. As the USS Peacemaker prepared for its historic journey, President Matheson paced his office, deep in thought. A sharp knock interrupted his reverie. Come in, he called. Dr. Emily Nakamura strode into the room, her eyes bright with drive. Mr. President, I understand you requested my presence. Matheson nodded, gesturing for her to sit. Dr. Nakamura, your expertise in xenobiology is unparalleled. We need you on this mission. Emily's eyebrows shot up. Sir, I'm honored, but... No buts, doctor. Your insights could mean the difference between success and failure. Can we count on you? She hesitated only a moment before nodding firmly. Yes, Mr. President, I'm in. Across town, Kyle Hall found himself surrounded by eager faces at a local elementary school. So, does Max have superpowers? A freckle-faced boy asked, eyes wide. Kyle chuckled, running a hand through Max's fur. No superpowers, just lots of love and training. Watch this. He gave a subtle hand signal and Max rolled over, then sat up, barking once. The children erupted in delighted squeals. As Kyle fielded more questions, he marveled at how his life had changed. Just weeks ago, he'd been an ordinary guy playing with his dog. Now, he was shaping humanity's understanding of our oldest animal companions. Meanwhile, aboard the USS Peacemaker, Jackson Briggs led his team through final preparations. The ship hummed with activity, its corridors a blend of high-tech equipment and the occasional bark or whine from their canine crewmates. Dr. Nakamura bent over a holographic display, frowning in concentration. The Ocampa physiology is fascinating, she murmured. Their sensory organs are highly developed, especially in the auditory range. We might be able to use that to our advantage. Briggs nodded, impressed. Good work, doctor. Keep digging. Every bit of information helps. As the ship's engines roared to life, Briggs gazed out at the stars. The fate of humanity rested on their shoulders and on the paws of their loyal companions. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. Light years away, on the Ocampa homeworld, chaos reigned in the High Council chambers. We must strike now, General Vex thundered, smacking his head on the table. Before the humans can unleash their beast armies upon us, Zara, the young diplomat, stood her ground. And risk provoking an even greater retaliation? We need more information before we act. Supreme Commander Galen's eyes darted between them, indecision etched on his face. As the argument raged on, a junior officer burst into the room. Commanders, we've detected an incoming ship of human origin. The room fell silent. Galen straightened, his decision made. Prepare for their arrival, and may the stars have mercy on us all. The USS Peacemaker decelerated as it approached the Ocampa homeworld, its sleek hull gleaming in the light of an alien sun. On the bridge, Ambassador Jackson Briggs gazed at the swirling blue-green orb below, his heart racing with anticipation and trepidation. Final approach, Ambassador, the pilot announced, her fingers dancing across the controls. Briggs nodded, turning to address his team. This is it, people. Everything we've trained for comes down to the next few hours. Dr. Emily Nakamura looked up from her data pad, her eyes bright with tenacity. The Ocampa physiology data we gathered has been integrated into our strategy. We're as prepared as we can be. As the ship descended through the atmosphere, Briggs felt a warm presence at his side. He looked down to see Apollo, his German shepherd partner, sitting at attention. The dog's ears were pricked forward, alert, and ready. 
Good boy, Briggs murmured, scratching behind Apollo's ears. Let's show them what we can do. The peacemaker touched down on a vast landing pad surrounded by towering spires of gleaming metal and glass. Through the viewports, Briggs could see a sea of Ocampa faces, a mix of curiosity and fear evident in their large, expressive eyes. Supreme Commander Galen stood at the forefront of the welcoming party, his posture rigid and his gaze wary. Beside him, the young diplomat Zara fidgeted nervously, her eyes darting between the ship and her superior. As the airlock hissed open, Briggs took a deep breath and stepped out onto Ocampa soil. Apollo padded silently at his heel, followed by the rest of the human delegation and their canine companions. The assembled Ocampa crowd gasped and murmured at the sight of the Earth creatures, some even taking a step back. Galen's eyes narrowed as he approached. Welcome to Ocampa, Ambassador Briggs. We trust your journey was... uneventful. Briggs smiled diplomatically. Thank you, Supreme Commander. We're honored to be here. Zara stepped forward, her voice steady despite her obvious nerves. We've prepared a ceremony to mark this historic occasion. If you'll follow me... As they walked, Briggs could feel the tension in the air. Ocampa troops lined the path, their weapons held at the ready. He caught Dr. Nakamura's eye, giving her a subtle nod. The delegation reached a large open square, where a raised platform had been erected. Briggs ascended the steps, the rest of his team fanning out behind him. He raised his hands, addressing the crowd. People of Ocampa, we come in peace and friendship. Allow us to demonstrate the bond between humans and our canine companions. At a subtle gesture from Briggs, the human canine teams sprang into action. Apollo leapt over barriers, wove through obstacle courses, and responded instantly to Briggs's every command. The other dogs performed equally impressive feats, retrieving objects, tracking scents, and executing complex maneuvers in perfect synchronization with their human partners. The Ocampa watched in stunned silence, their earlier fear giving way to awe. Even Galen's stern expression faltered as he witnessed the display of apparent control over these earth predators. As the demonstration concluded, Briggs approached Galen and Zara. Impressive, isn't it? And this is just a small sample of what our canine warriors can do. Galen's eyes widened. Canine warriors? Dr. Nakamura stepped forward, her data pad projecting holographic images. Our ability to breed and train these creatures is unparalleled. We can produce vast armies of specialized canine units, each bred for specific combat roles. Zara frowned, her analytical mind picking up on inconsistencies. But how is this possible? The level of control you're claiming... Briggs cut her off smoothly. I'm sure we'll have time to discuss the finer points during our negotiations. For now, let's focus on building a lasting peace between our worlds. As they moved towards the council chambers, Galen pulled his advisors close, whispering urgently. The human delegation's show of power had clearly rattled him, and the seeds of paranoia were taking root. Meanwhile, on Earth, Kyle Hall adjusted his tie nervously as he waited backstage at a glittering gala. Max sat patiently at his feet, tail wagging slightly. You're on in two minutes, Mr. Hall, a harried assistant informed him. Kyle nodded, his mind racing. How had he gone from an average guy playing with his dog to this? As the crowd's excited murmur grew louder, he steeled himself for another performance, another careful illusion to maintain humanity's newfound galactic reputation. The spotlight hit Kyle's face as he stepped onto the stage, Max trotting obediently beside him. Cameras flashed and the audience held its breath, eager to witness the power of Earth's dog masters firsthand. As Kyle began his rehearsed routine with Max, he couldn't help but wonder how long they could keep up this charade and what the consequences would be when the truth finally came to light. Light. Kyle swallowed hard, pushing away the growing unease in his stomach. As Max executed a flawless series of tricks, the crowd erupted in applause, their faces a mix of awe and fear. Across the galaxy, on the Ocampa homeworld, the atmosphere in the council chambers crackled with tension. Supreme Commander Galen's eyes narrowed as he faced Ambassador Briggs, across the negotiation table. Your demands are outrageous, Galen growled, his fist clenching. 
You expect us to believe you can control entire armies of these... beasts? Briggs maintained his composure, a practiced smile on his face. I assure you, Commander, our canine units are highly specialized and completely under our control. Galen's face flushed with anger. Troops, he barked, stand ready! As Ocampa's soldiers moved into position, Zara, the young diplomat, slipped away from the tense gathering. She found Dr. Nakamura in a quiet corridor, poring over data on her pad. Doctor, Zara whispered, her large eyes filled with doubt. These claims, they can't possibly be true, can they? Nakamura glanced around before leaning in close. What I'm about to show you is highly classified, she murmured, pulling up a series of complex diagrams on her pad. Our genetic modification techniques are far more advanced than we've let on. Zara's eyes widened as she scanned the falsified data, her earlier skepticism giving way to a mix of fear and fascination. Back on Earth, Kyle slumped onto his couch, exhaustion etched on his face. Max hopped up beside him, resting his head on Kyle's lap. Kyle absently stroked the dog's fur, his mind racing. What are we doing, buddy? He whispered. This whole thing, it's wrong. We're going to start a war based on lies. Max looked up at him, brown eyes full of unconditional love. In that moment, something clicked in Kyle's mind. He sat up straight, a determined glint in his eye. That's it, he breathed. They need to see the truth. Hours later, alarms blared throughout the Ocampa capital as an unauthorized shuttle breached the planet's defenses. Inside the council chambers, negotiations had devolved into a shouting match between Galen and Briggs. Suddenly, the doors burst open. Kyle Hall strode in, Max at his heels, followed by a squad of confused Ocampa security officers. Stop! Kyle shouted, his voice ringing through the stunned silence. This has to end now. All eyes turned to the unexpected intruder. Briggs's face drained of color. Hall, what the hell are you doing here? Kyle took a deep breath, looking around the room. I'm here to tell the truth, he said. Everything you've been told about our control over dogs, it's a lie. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the assembled Ocampa. Galen's eyes blazed with fury. Arrest him, he roared. As guards moved to seize Kyle, Max positioned himself protectively in front of his human. The sight gave Zara pause. Wait, she called out, stepping between Kyle and the guards. Let him speak. Kyle nodded gratefully at Zara. Our relationship with dogs isn't about control or creating weapons, he explained, kneeling down to ruffle Max's fur. It's about companionship, love, and mutual trust. As Kyle spoke, his voice filled with passion, Max wagged his tail and licked his face. The simple, genuine affection between man and dog was impossible to miss. Galen, his face contorted with rage, pushed past Zara. Enough of this nonsense, he bellowed, reaching for Kyle. In that moment, one of the human delegation's dogs broke away from its handler. The golden retriever trotted up to Galen, tail wagging, and sat down in front of the imposing Ocampa commander. Galen froze, his hand outstretched. The dog tilted its head, looking up at him with soft, friendly eyes. Slowly, almost against his will, Galen lowered his hand. The dog nuzzled it gently. A hush fell over the chamber as Galen's expression transformed. The hardened warrior's face softened, a flicker of wonder replacing his anger. I... I don't understand, he whispered, cautiously stroking the dog's head. Zara stepped forward, her voice filled with newfound conviction. Don't you see, Commander? We've been blind to the truth. These creatures aren't weapons to be feared. They're partners, friends. As the reality of the situation sank in, the atmosphere in the chamber began to shift. Ocampa and humans alike watched in amazement as Galen, the fearsome leader, knelt down to pet the friendly dog. Briggs, seeing his carefully constructed deception crumbling, opened his mouth to protest. But before he could speak, Kyle cut him off. No more lies, Kyle said firmly. It's time we showed the Ocampa who we really are. Our Kyle's words hung in the air, heavy with truth. Galen's fury dissipated as the golden retriever nuzzled against his leg, its warm brown eyes reflecting only gentleness. The grizzled warlord's hand trembled slightly as he stroked the dog's soft fur. 
His voice, when he finally spoke, was barely above a whisper. I, I've been a fool. Zara stepped forward, her voice filled with newfound conviction. Commander, this is our chance to truly understand our visitors, to forge a real connection. Galen straightened, his eyes scanning the room. The tension that had gripped the chamber mere moments ago was evaporating, replaced by a cautious curiosity. He gave a sharp nod to his troops. Stand down, he ordered. Turning to Kyle and the human delegation, he continued, Perhaps we should start over. Ambassador Briggs, Mr. Hall, would you join me in my private chambers? I believe we have much to discuss. As they filed out of the council room, Dr. Nakamura caught Kyle's eye. Her subtle nod conveyed volumes. The real work was just beginning. Over the next few days, the capital city of Ocampa transformed. The once tense atmosphere gave way to a buzz of excitement as humans and their canine companions demonstrated the true nature of their bond. In a sprawling park, a team of search and rescue dogs darted through an obstacle course, locating hidden victims with uncanny precision. Ocampa onlookers gasped in awe as the dogs and their handlers worked in perfect synchronization. The key is trust, explained Sarah Chen, a veteran handler, as her Belgian Malinois Rook sat alertly at her side. These dogs aren't our servants or our weapons. They're our partners. Nearby, in a makeshift clinic, Dr. Nakamura guided a group of Ocampa medical professionals through the basics of animal-assisted therapy. A gentle Labrador named Luna rested her head on the lap of an Ocampa child, its presence visibly calming the young patient. The emotional connection between humans and dogs can have profound healing effects, Nakamura explained, her voice filled with passion. It's a bond that goes back tens of thousands of years on Earth. As the demonstrations continued, Galen found himself spending more and more time observing these interactions. The hardened military leader's face softened each time he witnessed a moment of genuine affection between human and dog. One evening, as the twin sons of Ocampa set, Galen approached Kyle, who was playing fetch with Max in a quiet corner of the diplomatic compound. Mr. Hall, Galen began, his voice hesitant. I, I owe you an apology and perhaps a debt of gratitude. Kyle stood, brushing grass from his knees. There's no need for that, Commander. I'm just glad the truth is out there now. Galen's eyes followed Max as the dog trotted back with a stick in his mouth. Your people's relationship with these creatures, it's remarkable. I never imagined such a thing was possible. Kyle smiled, taking the stick from Max and giving it another toss. It's not always easy, but it's worth it. The loyalty, the companionship, there's nothing else like it in the universe. As they watched Max bound after the stick, Galen's expression grew thoughtful. Do you think... Do you think our people could learn to form such bonds? Before Kyle could answer, Zara approached, her face alight with excitement. Commander, Ambassador Briggs is looking for you. I think we've made a breakthrough in the negotiations. Galen nodded, his posture straightening. Very well. Mr. Hall, perhaps we can continue this conversation another time. As Galen strode away, Kyle couldn't help but feel a spark of hope. The path ahead was uncertain, but for the first time since this wild adventure began, he felt they were moving in the right direction. Max returned, dropping the stick at Kyle's feet and looking up expectantly. Kyle grinned, reaching down to scratch behind the dog's ears. What do you say, buddy? Ready to help make some galactic history? Max's tail wagged furiously in response, and together... Man and dog set off towards the negotiations that would shape the future of two worlds. Worlds. As the dust settled on Ocampa, the ripple effects of Earth's canine revelation spread across the galaxy. The canine accords, painstakingly negotiated over weeks of intense diplomacy, marked a new era of cooperation between humanity and the Ocampa. But for some, it was just the beginning. Sebastian Torres stood at the viewport of the interstellar transport, his German Shepherd Rex sitting alertly at his side. The mining colony of Zyron 7 loomed before them, a world torn by civil strife between the ruling royalists and the rebel reformers. Ready for this, boy? Torres murmured, scratching Rex behind the ears. The dog's tail thumped against the deck plating in response. As they disembarked, Torres took in the stark landscape of Zyron 7. 
towering mining rigs dotted the horizon, their constant drone a backdrop to the tense atmosphere of the spaceport. Armed guards from both factions eyed each other warily across imaginary lines. Torres approached a cluster of ornately dressed Zironian royalists, their elaborate headgear marking them as members of the ruling class. Rex padded silently beside him, drawing curious and slightly fearful glances. Esteemed representatives, Torres began, bowing slightly, I bring greetings from Earth and an offer of partnership. The lead royalist, his scales shimmering with iridescent patterns, stepped forward. We have heard tales of your... Beasts, he hissed, eyeing Rex warily. You claim they can be tamed? Torres smiled. More than tamed, Your Excellency. Trained to levels of obedience and skill beyond your wildest dreams. As Torres outlined Earth's proposal, breeding and training expertise in exchange for Dilithium mining rights, he could see the greed glittering in the royalist's eyes. They agreed readily, eager to harness this new power. The deal was struck, but Torres knew the real challenge lay ahead. The reformers would not take kindly to this off-world meddling. Days later, as Torres oversaw the construction of Earth's first training facility, alarms blared across the colony. A mine shaft had collapsed, trapping workers, including the young child of a prominent reformer leader. Without hesitation, Torres sprinted towards the disaster site, Rex bounding ahead. They arrived to find a scene of chaos. Frantic rescue workers, distraught families, and a gaping maw where the mine entrance had been. Rex, find! Torres commanded, attaching a small camera to the dog's collar. The crowd fell silent as Rex darted into the unstable tunnel, navigating through gaps too small for any Zyronian. On view screens hastily erected outside, they watched the feed from Rex's camera as he wove deeper into the mine. Minutes stretched like hours until finally, a small whimper could be heard. Rex had found the child, curled in a tiny air pocket. Good boy, Rex, Torres called into his communicator. Now, bring them home. With gentle encouragement, Rex coaxed the terrified child to grasp his collar. Carefully, steadily, he led them back through the treacherous passageways to safety. As Rex emerged from the mine, the child clinging to his fur, a cheer erupted from both royalists and reformers alike. The reformer leader rushed forward, scooping up his child with tears of joy. In that moment, Torres knew the tide had turned. The image of Rex's heroism, broadcast across Zyron 7, became a symbol of hope and unity. In the following weeks, as the reformers cautiously agreed to participate in the canine integration program, Torres couldn't help but marvel at how quickly things had changed. Terran mining operations were already breaking ground and a new generation of Zyronians was growing up alongside their loyal canine companions. As Torres prepared for his next assignment, he received a transmission from Earth. Dr. Jillian Reyes, a brilliant xenosociolinguist, was embarking on a mission to the notoriously xenophobic world of Groven. Her plan involved leveraging a unique canine phobia among the Grok species. Torres smiled, scratching Rex's head. Looks like we're not the only ones making waves out here, boy, he said. I wonder what other worlds are waiting for us. Rex wagged his tail, his eyes bright with the promise of new adventures. Together, they stepped onto their shuttle, ready to carry Earth's influence to the next star system. The euphoria of the Pax Canonis era faded like a mirage on the horizon. Earth's influence had spread across the stars, but the foundations of this galactic peace were built on shifting sands. On Abraxas IV, a world of rust-colored dunes and vast subterranean mineral deposits, human diplomat Aaron Grant felt the first tremors of discontent. He stood at the viewport of the diplomatic compound, his golden retriever Buddy at his side, watching as the planet's twin suns sank below the jagged skyline of mining rigs. Something's not right, boy, Grant murmured, his hand absently stroking Buddy's fur. The dog whined softly, sensing his master's unease. A sharp knock at the door broke the moment. Grant turned to see his Abraxan aide, Kex, enter with a worried expression etched across his scaled features. Ambassador, we've intercepted communications you need to hear, Kex said, his voice low and urgent. Grant followed Kex to the secure communication center. As they listened to the encrypted transmissions, Grant's face grew grim. The messages spoke of a growing resistance movement, of Abraxans questioning their place in the new galactic order. 
How long has this been going on? Grant demanded. Kex's eyes darted nervously. We're not sure, sir, but it's spreading fast. Grant's mind raced. He had to inform Earth Central Command. This could unravel everything they'd worked for. Across the galaxy, on the lush agricultural world of Corva, Raysa Vamari addressed a swelling crowd in the planet's capital. Her voice rang out, clear and defiant. For too long we've lived under the shadow of Earth's lie, she shouted, her words met with thunderous applause. These dogs they claim as weapons are nothing more than companions. We've seen it with our own eyes. The crowd roared its approval. Among them, a human colonist named Marcus felt a chill run down his spine. He reached for his communicator, ready to alert the local security forces. But before he could act, a hand clamped down on his shoulder. Marcus turned to see a Corvin face twisted in anger. Going somewhere, human? The Corvin growled. In orbit above Corva, Colonel Jack Brigham of the Marine Raiders received the distress call. His weathered face hardened as he listened to the reports of growing unrest. Prep the dropships, he barked to his subordinates. We're going in hot. As Brigham's troops descended on Corva's capital, the situation on the ground spiraled out of control. Vamari's supporters clashed with local security forces, the streets echoing with the sounds of energy weapons and breaking glass. Galaxy News Network drones buzzed overhead, broadcasting the chaos to billions of viewers across settled space. The images of violence shocked worlds that had known only peace under the Pax Caninus. On the planet Groxy, Zareth watched the feeds with grim satisfaction. The once cowed Grox warrior turned to her followers, her eyes blazing with newfound purpose. The human's deception crumbles, she declared. Now is our time to strike. As reports flooded in from a dozen worlds, Earth's President Matheson stared out the window of the Oval Office, his face ashen. The communications panel on his desk blinked incessantly, each light representing another crisis point across the galaxy. His advisors argued around him, their voices a cacophony of conflicting strategies. Some called for immediate military intervention, others for diplomacy and concessions. Matheson's gaze fell on a framed photo on his desk, an image of himself as a boy, arm around his childhood dog. The simplicity of that bond seemed a lifetime away from the tangled web of galactic politics he now faced. He took a deep breath and turned to face his advisors. The fate of humanity's interstellar influence hung in the balance. Whatever path he chose, the galaxy would never be the same. President Matheson's fingers hovered over the comms panel, each blinking light a reminder of the chaos engulfing human-controlled space. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for the decision that would reshape galactic politics. Colonel Brigham, he said, his voice steady despite the weight of his words, you have full authority to deploy the Marine Raiders. Secure our strategic outposts at all costs. Brigham's holographic form snapped to attention. Understood, Mr. President. We'll show these rebels the true meaning of Earth might. As the transmission ended, Matheson turned to Dr. Jillian Reyes, her face etched with concern. Doctor, I hope your plan works. The alternative... Reyes nodded grimly. It's a risk, sir, but it's our best chance to prevent full-scale war. On Zyron 7, Sebastian Torres crouched behind a makeshift barricade, energy bolts sizzling overhead. His German shepherd, Rex, whined softly beside him. Easy, boy, Torres murmured, checking his weapon. We're not done yet. A voice crackled over his comm. Torres, Malkar's forces have breached the eastern perimeter. Torres gritted his teeth. Bark squad, on me, he shouted, vaulting over the barricade with Rex at his heels. They sprinted through the chaos of the mining colony, past burning structures and panicked civilians. As they rounded a corner, Torres caught sight of Malkar the Unbound the rebel leader's cybernetic enhancements glinting in the firelight. For Zarath, Malkar roared, rallying his troops. Death to the human oppressors. Torres raised his rifle, but Malkar was already retreating, disappearing into the smoke-filled streets. Back on Earth, Matheson watched the classified footage of the Corva massacre, his face ashen. The images of human marines firing on unarmed protesters turned his stomach. Release the files, he ordered, his voice barely above a whisper. All of them. Let the galaxy see the truth. 
Dr. Reyes nodded, her fingers flying over a console. Initiating data dump now, Mr. President. Across settled space, the reaction was immediate and visceral. On Osion, the Ecumenopolis erupted in flames as billions poured into the streets, their fury ignited by the revelation of Earth's deception. Amidst the chaos, a human colonist named Elena fought her way through the crowds, desperately trying to reach the spaceport. The acrid smell of smoke filled her lungs as she ducked into an alley, narrowly avoiding a group of rioters. A piercing scream cut through the din. Elena turned to see an ocean child trapped beneath fallen debris. Without hesitation, she rushed to help, straining to lift the twisted metal. Hold on, she grunted, her muscles burning with effort. I've got you. As she pulled the child free, a shadow fell over them. Elena looked up to see an Ocean militia leader, his weapon trained on her. Why, he demanded, his voice raw with emotion. Why did your people lie to us? Elena met his gaze, her hands still protective over the rescued child. I don't know, she said softly, but not all of us were part of the deception. The militia leader's weapon wavered, uncertainty flashing across his face. In orbit above Ashun, Colonel Brigham surveyed the planet's burning megacities from the bridge of his command ship. His eyes hardened as reports of casualties flooded in. Sir, his exo reported, rebel forces have overrun the government district. Our ground teams are taking heavy fire. Brigham's eyes narrowed. Deploy the next wave. We're taking back this planet block by block if we have to. As dropships streaked through Osion's atmosphere, carrying fresh troops into the fray, the galactic landscape continued to shift. On a dozen worlds, once loyal allies turned their backs on Earth, while others clung desperately to human protection against the rising tide of rebellion. In her hidden base on Groxy, Zarath watched the unfolding chaos with a mixture of triumph and frustration. The human's lie had been exposed, but her dream of a unified anti-Earth alliance seemed to be slipping away as former subject races turned on each other in the power vacuum. She turned to her advisors, her voice cold with perseverance. We must adapt our strategy. The humans are wounded, but not defeated. Our path to victory lies in exploiting the divisions among their former vassals. As Zareth plotted her next move, the fragile network of alliances and treaties that had defined the Pax Caninus era crumbled. In its place, a new galactic order began to take shape, one forged in the fires of rebellion and shaped by the bitter legacy of Earth's great deception. The data dump hit like a supernova, shattering the fragile peace of the Pax Caninus era. Worlds that had once embraced Earth's influence now recoiled in fury and betrayal. On Osion, Elena's act of kindness toward the trapped child briefly pierced the veil of hatred, but it was not enough to stem the tide of violence engulfing the ecumenopolis. As the galaxy erupted in chaos, President Matheson's gambit for transparency backfired spectacularly. The very foundation of Earth's interstellar influence crumbled beneath the weight of its exposed lies. On Paraxis, a world of endless forges and molten rivers, Zarath seized the moment. Her eyes gleamed with vengeful fire as she addressed the assembled leaders of various rebel factions. The humans have revealed their true nature, she declared, her voice carrying over the hiss of cooling metal. No longer can we allow these deceivers to poison our worlds with their presence. We must purge them from the stars. A roar of approval shook the chamber. Zarath's words ignited a spark that would soon engulf the galaxy in flames. Across the resource-rich outer quadrants, human colonial outposts found themselves besieged. On Zyron 7, Sebastian Torres and his bark squad fought a desperate battle against overwhelming odds. Energy weapons sizzled through the air as Rex darted between cover, relaying Torres's commands to the beleaguered defenders. Hold the line, Torres shouted, his voice barely audible over the din of combat. We can't let them take the dilithium mines. But even as Rex's heroic efforts rallied the defenders, Zarath's forces pressed their advantage. Orbital bombardments rained down, shattering defensive positions and vaporizing vast swaths of the mining complexes. Torres watched in horror as a blinding flash consumed the main refinery. The shockwave knocked him off his feet, and as he struggled to rise, he saw Rex limping toward him, fur singed and eyes filled with unwavering loyalty. 
Good boy, Torres whispered, reaching out to stroke the dog's head. We gave it our all. As Zyron 7 fell, similar scenes played out across human space. Colonel Jack Brigham's Marine Raiders fought tooth and nail, but their technological edge meant little in the face of Zarath's overwhelming numbers and ruthless tactics. Brigham stood on the bridge of his flagship, holographic displays flickering with reports of lost colonies and shattered fleets. His weathered face was set in unwavering grit as he issued the order that would forever change the course of the war. All remaining forces converge on Dakana 9. We make our stand there. On Dakana 9, Dr. Jillian Reyes worked tirelessly to maintain the fragile alliance she had forged. The shipyards orbiting the planet hummed with activity as Dakanian and human engineers labored side by side, preparing for the coming storm. We must stand united, Reyes urged the Dakanian Leadership Council. Zarath's crusade threatens not just humanity, but all who would choose coexistence over genocide. As if in response to her words, the sky above Dekana's capital erupted in fire. Zarath's armada had arrived, and with it came a reign of destruction that would test the dedication of even the staunchest allies. In the chaos of the initial assault, Kyle Hall found himself thrust into the heart of the conflict. The once naive colonist had been forged into a hardened militia fighter, and now he stood alongside Reyes as they attempted one last, bold strategy. Are you sure about this? Hall asked, looking down at Max, his faithful companion through years of hardship. Reyes nodded grimly. It's our only chance to remind people of what we've lost and what we still stand to lose. As magma torpedoes rained down on the Decanian capital, Hall and Max ventured into the streets. Amid the rubble and fire, they played a simple game of fetch, their actions broadcast across the galaxy. For a moment, it seemed to work. On a hundred worlds, beings of all species paused in their conflicts, remembering the simple joy of the human-canine bond. But Zarath would not be denied her vengeance. The orbital bombardment intensified, and Hall found himself running for his life, Max at his heels. They ducked into a partially collapsed building as the world around them turned to molten slag. Come on, boy, Hall urged, pushing deeper into the unstable structure. We've got to get back to Reyes. A deafening crack split the air, and Hall looked up to see a massive slab of concrete tilting toward him. Time seemed to slow as he realized he couldn't move fast enough to escape. Then Max was there, shoving Hall clear with all his strength. The loyal dog's eyes met his master's one last time before the rubble came crashing down. Max! Hall's anguished cry was lost in the roar of destruction that engulfed Dekna 9. As the planet burned, the remnants of humanity's forces retreated to their last bastion, the Soul System. The Gateway Nexus, Earth's final line of defense, stood as a testament to human ingenuity and desperation. Colonel Brigham surveyed the assembled fleet, a patchwork of military vessels and hastily armed civilian ships. His voice was steady as he addressed the combined forces of humanity and their remaining allies. This is where we make our stand, not just for Earth, but for the very idea that different species can coexist in peace. We fight not only against Zarath's forces, but against the hatred and fear that threaten to consume us all. As if in answer to his words, space itself seemed to tear open. Zarath's armada poured through the breach, a vast swarm of ships blotting out the stars. The battle for Earth had begun. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.